Do I use a fox caller? Sometimes. This is pretty much every option that I have for calling in foxes. From the $5 Bunnings dog toy chew toy squeaker, all the way up to the Olight with the speaker, which I just use as a Bluetooth speaker for like apps and fox caller noise soundy things. Discounting that for a moment, because I don't want to talk about Bluetooth speakers, because you can pretty much get any Bluetooth speaker on the market and, and achieve the same result. I want to talk about these. So, do they work? Well, that depends on a lot of things. From what I've seen, it depends on where you're hunting, what the foxes are acclimated to, which means what they are used to, and the type of prey that they're in uh, that, that's in that area. So I'll go through each of these, I'll show you what they sound like and what they do and how to use them, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I personally do. So this is the most basic of fox callers. This is the Bunnings Chew Toy. This, there, was a, there was a period, um, it was probably a couple months ago on Facebook, where everyone was going out to Bunnings and buying these up. It got to the point where there was pretty much none left and there were two toys. There was the um, this one, which squeaks, and then there was the rhino, but it would grunt instead of squeaking. Um, I found this one, which just has this little plastic squeaker, and um, okay, and, and that's that. It's uh, it, I, I don't know why. I don't know that anyone knows why these work. Dogs love them. Canines love them. Foxes love them. Um, the next one's probably the most common. I think this is called the the T2. Um, this one you blow on it and it has two of those little um, squeakers in there so it sounds a little bit like this and it's 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 actually I think this is 3d printed it looks like it's 3d printed and then it has that little setting in there that's what that one sounds like this one is about I think these are about $30 uh, and you have to pay for shipping as well this little chain and, and uh, lanyard is just something that I have from I don't know where then there's this type this is called the Tenterfield um, whistle the way this works is you're supposed to put it with the small there's a small hole on one side and a big hole on the other you're supposed to put it on the small hole down and then do some manipulation with your tongue and your top lip there and then blow so that the air escapes through this little passageway in the middle if I can get it right because this one actually requires a bit of skill let's try it or something like that It's supposed to sound raspy, I believe. I could be wrong, but that's what the T2 is. Um, or sorry, that's what the Tenterfield does. There is a large variety of this type of whistle. They can be made with metal bottle caps. They can be made with bones. I've seen people that use jaw bones from feral pigs. They drill a hole in it and then they can use it as that Tenterfield style of whistle. I believe it's supposed to sound like a rabbit in distress. I'm not sure. Okay, there you go, that's that. Probably the next one up is this one. So this actually comes as a two-piece setting. I don't know where the other part of it is. It's a little squeaker ball, which has yet another uh, plastic squeaker in there. So it's a little air, air bubble and you squeak it and it's like a little squeak. Praising. This is the larger one. <laughs> I believe this is this one is meant to sound like um, fowl. So ducks, quails. So you either rip it and then... <laughs> And that's extremely loud or if you want it to sound like a quail I believe you're supposed to uh, man the terminology in this video is gonna be so wrong this one's meant to be jiggled um phrasing and it's meant to sound like a, a quail jumping out of the grass because that's what happens if you dr drive through a paddock full of quail not full of quail but with a, a paddock with populated with quail they'll jump like a, you know they'll make that noise but a lot faster uh, and that's what they'll do so that again attracts well is meant to attract foxes that are used to that type of prey these are 
essentially exactly what's in the squeakers. Um, these are squeakers. So different shapes and sizes, uh, in fact, different diameter of squeaker will produce different noises. They've got the, it's, it's just an outer ring of plastic with a little blade in there, a plastic piece of plastic blade in there. And then each one of them, when you blow on them, um, will make a different noise. So this is a, a wider one. I think that's about five or 10 mil in diameter. These can be both sucked and blown on. Phrasing. This is a probably three to five mil diameter. You can see that it's a lot higher pitched. That's what they do. Now, these are uh, amazing. Actually, you know, I didn't go into this one. This one in the set of two, so with this big one and that smaller squeaker, I think was about $40 from most gun shops have these. Um, these ones, I bought these from AliExpress uh, and I think they've got them on eBay as well, but the cheaper you go, the cheaper you'll find them. So if you go eBay, they're probably about five bucks for a hundred or 50. AliExpress, they're about five bucks, but for like a, a quarter of a billion. They're a lot cheaper on AliExpress. And then you just have to pick the diameter and the quantity and then they get delivered. If you're getting them from eBay, you'll get them a lot sooner. From AliExpress may take several months. What I do with these ones, I use them and then I just chuck them out. I make sure they go in the bin and I don't leave them on the property or in the, in the forest. Because that's not cool. Now, somebody on Facebook, and I'll have to send a thanks to them, sent me these. Uh, they are, I believe these are 223, yep, 223 Remington casings that have had the primer removed after being fired and have had a squeaker placed in there, which means you can blow on either side. Hang on. What? Question. What? Are we not saying phrasing anymore? Which, that's fine, whatever, but if we're doing a new thing and nobody told me, that I'd have a problem with. And it makes a noise. And what's great about this is, it's a lot harder to lose these than it is to lose one of these. I, I always lose these, they go in my pocket and whatever else, um, you know, in the car and you just drop them everywhere. They're, they're horrible things to carry around. Whereas if it's in a shell casing, they're a lot easier. Um, but what I'd probably do is find some uh, non-toxic uh, paint or coating or something, maybe even some gaffer tape to tape it up because as it is there, you can easily confuse it with one of your other casings and just chuck it in the bin. But all right, that's, that's that, that's the next one. Final thing, this one. It's the Western Rivers Six Shooter Electronic uh, Fox Caller. Has a speaker on this end, control panel, batteries with a screw. I believe it just takes a couple of double A's or triple A's and it's electric. So which means, and it's, I think it goes up to about a hundred and something decibels, which is pretty good. So you hold it down, flashing light means it's on, volume control, and then you pick the, dis the call that you want to use. So woodpecker distress is number one. And that'll keep playing until you press one. And if you want it to only play once, you just hold down the power button or press the power button, sorry. Press it again, but it'll only play a single set. Two, cottontail distress. So that's only one call. Fox pup distress. Fawn. Rodent squeaking. And you'll notice that that rodent squeaking actually sounds a bit like, you know, these, these, these um, squeaker toys. And then last but not least, coyote. Of all of these, the one that I've used, which I haven't had work successfully for me yet, is the cottontail and the rodent squeak. I wouldn't use a coyote call or a fawn distress, or I may use the woodpecker one because it does sound a little bit like some of the birds that we have here in Australia and their, their calls of an evening, but I've only used the small animal distress calls. I wouldn't use the bigger ones. 
um, and I haven't, but none of these have actually worked for me. And that's probably because the only place I've used them on is very uh, shy. The foxes at the property are very shy. They've been they've they've been shot at. They're already accustomed to people. They're afraid. You know, they they're only really huntable at night. I haven't had any luck with these. So now you're probably wondering. What have I had luck with? I have managed to call in a fox using this T2 whistle once. It was very, very early on. And it was when these weren't as common as they are now. So I'm, I'm imagining that other hunters haven't been using them as much. Since then, it hasn't really worked. And I haven't tried it again in any new season. So when the pups are out, um, I've only ever really tried it on older, wiser foxes. There you go, that one's from foxcalls.com. Well, I have used one of these two squeakers. Now, I don't know if it was the big one or the small one, but I have managed to get a couple of younger foxes to come in from about 300 meters all the way up to about 50 meters. And it was pitch black, so they couldn't see me. I did manage to get one of them. The other one got away. This has worked for me. That said, I would then presume that, you know, the squeaker and these 223 casings would probably be just as effective. Um, but I, again, um, I haven't really had much time to try them out. I've tried a lot of these. I've tried this a lot. I've tried this a ton. And I had just, you know, I've only really tried it during the daytime. So I haven't really had much success. Will it work for you? Will any of these work for you? It really depends on the foxes. It depends on what you're hunting. I think a lot of these callers on this digital caller will work great if you're hunting wild dogs. I have no idea. I'm not qualified to say anything about that. With everything else here, including a Bluetooth speaker and, and specifically to foxes, I think it's gonna depend entirely on the the climate that you're hunting in, the, um, the, the foxes and what they're used to in the area that you're hunting, what types of prey are available and what the foxes are eating. So if they're eating mostly frogs and insects and, and other smaller reptiles and, and mammals, I, I don't know. Um, I know that if they're eating rabbits and birds, that's why I believe these squeakers mostly work because in the areas where I'm hunting, there's a lot of rabbits. I actually have some thermal footage showing a rabbit or a hare coming out of a fence and then a fox going after it. So I know that they're hunting rabbits and I try to um, stay around where the rabbits come out so to try to get those foxes. Try to figure out what your foxes are hunting, um, if they're chickens or if they're other types of birds, you know, maybe use some bait instead of these, some meat or something like that to draw them out. And if they're rabbits, then yeah, do that. All right, so that's that. One other thing that I wanted to do a quick update on was to show uh, one of the things I'm putting inside my car. This is Seeker 3, um, which I've been using and I've just kept it in my car and I kind of use it often to try to find the fox that I've shot using this. So I walk around the paddock because it's got quite a broad beam. That's the Seeker 4, sorry, that's the Seeker 3. And I keep that in this pouch and it works great. You know, you, it has the same typical O-light. I'm actually upgrading it to this. This is the new Seeker 4. Now what's different about this is that it has a USB-C plug in the base and you keep that plugged in and then pull that out and it's ready to go. You don't even have to worry about the magnetic charger. It does still support the charger, so it does still charge if you are so inclined, but it also just charges as soon as it's plugged into the base. Difference between these two is aside from the four being brighter obviously than the three by a little bit, this one's uh, 4600 lumens. This one's 4500 or 4000 lumens. This one, the three, also has the proximity sensor so it turns off, well it dims when you get closer to it. The four doesn't, there's no proximity sensor there. But still, for the car, it is great. I'll just slide it in there. In fact, it also comes with this wall mount for it. So it's either got a 3M sticker or a couple of holes to screw them into some timber, put that on the wall and then slide that on. And that can just stay charging all the time. So you can remove it and slide it back in again without having to unplug the charger. I hope that answers uh, all your questions about callers and the efficacy of those. 
if there's any other questions you have, if you want me to um, answer anything based on my experience or anything else I may know, uh, please leave a comment uh, below. Otherwise, if, if there is anything else that you'd like to see uh, me do, leave a comment below and I'll try to make it happen. Thank you so much for watching. Please do me a huge favor and like and subscribe and share with all your friends and all that other magic. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying to do some upgrades uh, with my thermal and the tent setup that I've got, which I hope that I can achieve. And if I can, then I'll show those as well. I'm actually doing a fundraiser to pay for some of this gear, uh, which I have a link for down below as well. If you can spare a buck, that'll be amazing as well. Until next time, hugs and puppies. Now this actually comes as a two uh, piece setting. Uh, and here we have a two piece setting, the jewelry.